Happy Wednesday to you, and welcome on in to Wager Talk Extra. We're here to remind you simply that no matter what sport you're cashing on, the money's going to spend all the same. It's just as green. Never went up to the counter with the uh, money I made on a boxing bet, and they said, no, that, that money's no good here. We have two guests today on an all-combat edition of Wager Talk Extra. Andy Lang going to be coming up first. Talk a little UFC fight night live from Las Vegas, and Kevin Dolan's going to shut it down for us. Talk a little boxing. We got a Friday bout and a Saturday bout. Two free plays coming from Kevin Dolan and plenty of actionable info along the way. We also have two great specials we're going to share with you here on the show that can hopefully save you some coin while we're hopefully making you some as well. So without any further ado, I mean, let's get right into it with our mainstay here. Welcome back to Wager Talk Extra, the one and only Andy Lang. And Andy, we're here to talk UFC. We did golf yesterday. We got NASCAR on the horizon with you. But I mean, this Saturday, or maybe I should call it Sunday morning, we have a uh, a UFC event that is uh little drastically different than most that are held in the States here. How's it going, man? And uh, what are we getting into this weekend? Uh, it's going great. Uh, yeah, this event is a little bit of a bizarre one, especially if you're a casual UFC fighter so or a, a casual UFC fan. So what's happened here is they wanted to do an event in Seoul, South Korea. So they loaded the card mm-hmm. with Asian fighters, a lot of South Koreans, and they're doing a thing over there, Road to the UFC, where they're showcasing a lot of these Asian fighters and giving them contracts. The event yep. fell through in Seoul, South Korea, so they moved it to Las Vegas, but... They wanted to make sure that they kept it on the same time that it was going to be in South Korea. So the prelims start at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, and the main card starts at 1 a.m. Eastern time. So you so you have a couple things going on here. You have a lot of names that are not familiar to the casual UFC fan, and the time is going to be uh, pretty brutal. It's going to mess with the body clocks on some fighters, I'm sure, the fans. But uh, the best thing about this card is there's ways to make money, and that's what we're about. Yeah, that's all we care about. And I guess they probably figured they were like, oh, those jackasses in Las Vegas, they don't have any clocks there anyways. They're going to be up anyways. So eh, the main event starts at 3 o'clock. They won't know. They, they'll go to the buffet right after. So, all right, we know that this is going to be quite the different event, but let's figure out, like you said, ways that we could maybe expose that or ISO in on it. You have a fight to watch, and uh, is this a main card fight, undercard fight? What did you want to ISO right here at the top? Also got a money line pick coming up here for the folks, but fight to watch. What are we watching, Andy? Yeah, this is uh, this is a little segment we did on Inside the Distance. It's basically just a fight that we're excited to watch. Could be a good betting angle. Could be a good stylistic. Uh, I picked this fight because I think these are two fighters that you're going to see in the UFC. Uh, Kazama is a really, really good wrestler. Um, he does a great job of taking his opponents down and keeping them on on the mat. Um, He's finished quite a few of his fights. He's got really good experience, and normally he would be the favorite in a matchup. Unfortunately, he is going up against an animal. Rinya Nakamura is an absolute beast. This guy is not only going to fight in the UFC, he's going to do very well in the UFC. It It would not surprise me at all if he ended up in the top five of these rankings. So um, Kazama, his ground game is good, but his striking leaves a little bit to be desired. Rinya is a decorated wrestler and his striking is almost as good as his wrestling and his ground game. He can knock you out with punches. He can knock you out with kicks. He can submit you. He is at this point with the guys that he's fighting. He's pretty much unstoppable. He's a big favorite for a reason, but this is an exciting fight because Rinya is going to be a star in the UFC. Kazama is probably going to get a UFC contract at some point. So this is a really good opportunity to take a look at guys that you're going to be seeing in the future. Well, and I'm glad you went with a prelim fight because this is a fight that we can maybe actually watch for us here on the East Coast. So not only is it a fight to watch, it's one that we won't have to pin our eyelids open to watch. So Toshioma Kazama taking on Rinya Nakamura. That's the fight to watch, according to Andy. Hop below in the comments. What fight are you looking to watch on the UFC card this weekend? Now let's get the folks a little more actionable of the info. You got a little money line action for you here. No money line, Matt, like your co-host, formerly on Instagram inside the distance but you got a money line play for us andy what are we eyeing here in ufc fight night action i'm taking a look at this uh duho troy versus kyle nelson fight and 
Duhu Choi has not fought in a couple of years, and normally that is a gigantic red flag. I do not like betting on fighters who, who, who have been coming off a big break. And to top it all off, he lost his last three fights in the UFC. However, he is fighting Kyle Nelson, who is quite honestly not very good. And I think this is a really, really sneaky setup for uh, Duho Choi. The UFC is not stupid. Duho Choi's nickname is the Korean Superboy. This guy is a huge mm. fan favorite in Korea. When they made this fight, they were expecting this to be in front of a Korean crowd. And they were expecting Duho Choi to put on a show and probably get a finish. Duho Choi's fights do not go the distance normally. He comes out guns a blazing, and Kyle Nelson just does not have uh, a lot of strong points to his game. His strikes are eh, his wrestling and takedowns are eh. And I expect Duho Choi to have learned quite a few things over the last couple of years. This is a really good setup fight for him. He's going to come out really fast. He's going to look to put on a show like he always does. I think he overwhelms Kyle Nelson in a fight that UFC set up for a great comeback for Choi. So this is minus 200 or less. Uh, check your books and shop around. But take Duho Choi probably by KO over Kyle Nelson. I mean, terrific nickname matchup, the Korean Superboy versus the Monster. That alone, Andy, was worthy of inclusion here on Wager Talk Extra. He said take Duho Choi over Kyle Nelson on a Seoul Korea night that's taking place in Las Vegas. I just know our next guest, uh, Kevin Dolan, will somehow be happy about that because he's an Irish guy living in Korea. So uh, some, somehow he's to blame for all of this, Andy. But uh, before we let you go, man, I know that you have a deal that you guys worked up with Andrew McGinnis, something you're super excited about. 21-7 and seven is the combined run that you and our friend Andrew McGinnis has put together in MMA. And correct me if I'm wrong, you can grab you and Andrew McGinnis all of your plays through March, just one ninety nine is the offer they worked up, and I know it's something you both are pretty excited about, right? Yeah, and I, we, the reason we make it, I want to make sure it, this is MMA plays, not just UFC specific. Uh, we hit a play last okay. week on the PFL Challenger Series. I'm probably going to have another play this week in the PFL Challenger Series. Don't be surprised if we sprinkle in an LFA play. So this is just not UFC. You're going to get all the UFC. You're going to get all the 5% plays that we have. But this is going to include some of the other uh, the, the other uh, uh, fighting uh, scenes and some of the regional mm -hmm. matchups that you can cash in. Sometimes those give you even better odds and better opportunities. So you're going to get all MMA plays. Andrew and myself have been on a really, really nice run, 21 and seven combined. So it's a, it's a steal. You're going to get all plays through March and starting this weekend, every weekend has a UFC event till the end of March. Yeah, eight in March alone. So definitely check that out. Andy Lang, easiest way to get to his page, wt.buzz slash AL. It's loaded on his page and Andrew McGinnis's no code needed for that. So Andy, appreciate it, man. We'll have you back tomorrow to talk some NASCAR. Andy is basically my unofficial yet official co-host here of Wager Talk Extra. So we look forward to talking to you tomorrow, man. And from the octagon, why don't we swing on over to the ring? And when we talk boxing, we always go to the Irishman. Kevin Dolan, he's always doing a little bit of everything. So he'll be also a mainstay fixture here on Wager Talk Extra. And Kev, tonight, don't you got a 5%er rocking on the hardwood? How you been, brother? All good, Dan. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, we got a 5% NBA uh, top player for tonight. We're on a 15 and 6 run our last 21 NBA 5% mm. top players. So, you know, really looking forward to that. And obviously, talking some boxing on today's show as well. And of course, you can always catch Kevin as well on stoppage time talking a little soccer. But let's talk about throwing some haymakers here today. And let's get into a fight that's going Friday. We want to talk about this Emmanuel Navarrete and Liam Wilson match. This one's going to be Friday night on ESPN+. And Kev, before we get into maybe the way that you're going to be betting this, and we suggest the listeners do as well, anything that we need to know heading into this fight we got any history between these two fighters or how are you breaking it down heading in to the ring between these two yeah no history Dan uh much to speak of uh you know it's yeah. looking like shaping up to be a good fight over in Glendale obviously we have a fighter in Emmanuel Navarrete he's looking at a third belt in a third different weight class here so that's the big talking point of this fight you know he's won titles down at junior featherweight previously he's won titles at featherweight as well 
you know, but now he's entering the deep waters of the 130 pound division. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, he transitions to this new weight. Um, you know, will this be a test? We don't know not to get into the fight, but, you know, originally the scheduled opponent for this fight was meant to be Oscar Valdez. Uh, he was forced out through injury. So in steps Liam Wilson here. Um, and hopefully it'll be as much of a fun fight as the one originally intended against Oscar Valdez. So I'm wondering, you think maybe Navarrete is uh, potentially the guy who could be putting his big stamp on this fight, but as far as the fight goes, is that how we're going to be betting him? We're taking him outright? Is Liam Wilson maybe going to make it go a little bit longer, or could you see this fight getting finished before it goes the distance? I see this one kind of ending early, Dan. You know, uh, Liam Wilson, while he is ranked number three with the WBO currently, uh, there's a big reason why the Australian is such a big underdog in this one. You know, Wilson has fought no one close to Emmanuel Navarrete's level over the course of his career so far. He got absolutely blasted out by Filipino uh, Joe, Joe Nunez uh, a couple of fights ago as well. So I don't think this is a great style matchup for Wilson in this one. I don't believe... You know, he'll have the, the pop, the power to keep Navarrete off him in there. Um, and even when Navarrete hasn't looked particularly good in fights either, you know, we just need to go back and revisit his last fight against Eduardo Baez last August. You know, he looked very laboured in that one. Um, but even with that said, he was he was arguably losing the fight. He still has the power to finish the job. Um, you know, hit Baez with a one-punch shot. The liver stopped him in the sixth round. So... You know, I like the Navarrete to win inside the first six rounds. That looks decent at plus 115, but I'm going to go instead for the mm -hmm. under 7.5 rounds in this one at minus 120. We do take a slight hit in the odds, uh, but that's more the made up for in getting those extra rounds, getting us to the midpoint of the eighth round here. So, yeah, under 7.5 rounds for me in this one on Friday. Getting the extra round and a half, only laying minus 120 at it. Or if you're so bold, Kevin also says maybe a little sprinkle on that six round plus 115. So that's Navarrete taking on Wilson. And in true uh, form here on Wager Talk Extra, we're also going to take a look at a female boxing match that's going on Saturday. This one on DAZN. And we're not looking at the main event here on DAZN. We're actually going to look a, take a look at this cheap undercard fight you wanted to break down. It's Alicia Baumgartner and Elham Mikaled. So what made you intrigued about throwing this one here in your first appearance on Wager Talk Extra? What's uh, what's the angle in this one, Kev? It's hard not to be a fan of Alicia Baumgartner, Dan. Uh, she's, you know, she's a really exciting fighter to watch. Um, and obviously this one takes place, the Amanda Serrano, the zone card uh, this weekend. Um, you know, not only is she a good fighter to watch, she's been on an incredible run over her last few fights as well. You know, she came over to the UK a little over a year ago last November, uh, November 2021, that is, and absolutely smashed up and undefeated Terry Harper. Uh, in that fight, you know, stopped her inside of four rounds. And Harper was a huge favourite ahead of that one as well. She was somewhere in the region of minus 900 uh, pre-fight. And, you know, two fights later, Bumgarner does it again. Uh, Dethrones unified champ Michaela Myers, a big underdog as well. So anytime she's fighting, you know, sign me up to watch, uh, to watch some of her rounds uh, and, and fights, you know. Absolutely. Well, well, Kev, in your uh, little preview there of the fight, I heard a lot of love here for Baumgartner, not so much for her opponent in <laughs> Nicolet. So uh, I have a feeling the free play on this one might be going towards that, uh, that female over there with all the belts draped around her. How are we betting this one, brother? And you would be correct, Dan. That's exactly where I'm going <laughs> with this one. Uh, you know, Baumgartner is definitely making a case for herself as being one of the best fighters in the women's game right now. Um, but the only thing is maybe Pete, people are getting slightly carried away with the power aspect of her game. Uh, you know, Harper, who the fight we just mentioned, was on a run of six stoppages in her previous nine fights heading into that one. Um, and she just fought a completely wrong fight in that one. She opted to go front foot heavy on Bum Bumgardner, um, and she was getting beat up as a result. You know, she took one flush to the chin. She didn't even know where she was. So, you know, since then, there's been a... A little bit, you know, overkill on Baumgartner's power. And I can't see this being Mekhaled in this fight. You know, she's had just three stoppages over her career so far. A 19.9% .9 KO percentage. Um, and she just came out of a bit of war, a bit of a war against Katie Taylor's old full Delphine Pierce, who last time out as well, um, handing her first loss. So she's she's definitely not going to be going in there looking to trade bombs with Alicia Baumgartner. You know, that'd be a suicide run for us. So I believe we see this one go the distance as a result on Saturday night. You know, Baumgartner has underrated boxing skills in there. She's got a great stiff jab to the body. 
scout Landon Michaela Meyer by a two to one average in power shots last time out as well. So yeah, I think we see Baumgartner win a fairly one sided decision this weekend uh, over in New York. I know it's a minus one seventy five. Yeah, and with the Irish accent, no bombs with Baum Gardner. That wrote itself right there, Kev. So, brother, <laughs> we're going to be seeing you a lot here on Wager Talk Extra, I'm sure, because it's not just boxing, despite the fact that you're our number one boxing capper at Wager Talk. Soccer, basketball, NHL, you do it all. And you see right below me, terrific deal we have with the NHL break coming up. The Irishman, Kevin Dolan, you can grab his full NHL season pass for less than half price. People in front office doing a great job with that one. Just use code SLAP50. Head on over wt.buzz slash KD. SLAP50 will chop it down from $399 to $199. And how's the NHL been running for you, Kev? It's been going well, Dan. I believe we're on a 16 and 5 run right now, especially on three way money lines. Those have been uh, killing us for us lately. So, uh, yeah, all good in NHL. I'm really looking forward to a big second half of the season. So if you're not using Slap 50, I don't know what the heck you're doing. Kev, love having you on, man. Go get some sleep because I'm pretty sure the Irishman who's in Korea, it's already like Saturday where you're at. So get the heck out of here. We'll talk to you soon, man. Appreciate you being on. And that's actually going to wrap it for us here on Wager Talk Extra. We will be back tomorrow with a full slate, a threesome that we have for you as Andy Lang's going to be back to talk some NASCAR. Kyle Anthony's going to be joining us to give his thoughts on the UFC card. And we also got Sig stopping by for a little pony talk on a Thursday afternoon. We're looking forward to it. And we hope you join us right back here Thursday on Wager Talk Extra.